Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm New Jack. Don't be an ass eater in Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> Our brand new wrestling and science extreme is next. And this shit is spread like wildfire. I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Tickets are on sale now for our 20th anniversary Back to the 80s and 90s WrestleFest Birthday Bash, Saturday, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, Dan Marotti with our friend New Jack as yes, we sir. continue the Wrestling Inside is Extreme series. I have to tell you, I'm a little disappointed in you guys if you have not visited the only newjack.com and picked up a copy of this tremendous autobiography that New Jack has released. You can still do it now. After the show, of course, we want you to stay with us through the duration, but New Jack will hopefully be with us on a regular basis going forward. We're going to have more cyber autograph signings when he is with us in the future. So it's a great way to interact with the fans live. Uh, we do. We love to take your questions. Sometimes if we have something coming up on an episode, we don't want to go too, too far into the answer because we want you to watch the episodes. But we have a lot of fun when we go live. We got the best team in the business, Jack, in the other room. Yeah. What would we do without this team? I don't know, man. The motherfuckers are great. They just fed me, thank God. The John C. Riley of Boston Wrestling went out and got you your lunch. Yeah. We got Dave the intern, who I have never seen without his corona mask. We've got Jackie the joke man. We got little Cena who helped with the live streams. It's just a great group of people, and I am grateful to them. I hope they know it, even though they all think I'm crazy and insane, especially if they were listening to the stories we were talking about before we went on the air with this, this episode. It was not Thanksgiving. <laughs> But it was a feast nonetheless. <laughs> All right, back to ECW in 1995, even though what you went through in Gainesville was extreme. Yes, it was. Uh, tell us, you seem to vanish towards Ass nigger. Huh? Towards the end of 95, you guys seemed to vanish for a while. Were you injured? Were you suspended? They had that uh, holiday hell tour and you were MIA. I was suspended. What did you do? What'd you do now, I should say? I hit dances with Dully in the head with a stick. <laughs> now, I asked you about him on the last episode, and you gave me no answers. I was hungry. I couldn't think. You, are, now, you are, tell us why you hated dances with Dudley. Okay. <laughs> he came up to me. And he was like, we putting y'all over. No. He says, I'm putting you over. But it's not like I want to. Really? That's a ballsy thing to say. I said, well, motherfucker, you need to take that with Paul E. I said, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I said, but a jobber is a jobber. And you are a fucking jobber. I'm, I'm glad you told him that. You know what I mean? So, we started the match. <laughs> and he was being stiff with me. All right. And I was being stiff back with him. So I shot him off and I told him, I said, duck the clothesline. He came on the rope and he barely put his head down. And I swung, I always swing neck level. That's it. I don't go no lower than your neck. And he just bent his head down and I hit him in the nose. His nose started bleeding. He said, Jack, you broke my nose. I said, I told you to duck. He was like, no, you broke my fucking nose. I said, okay, you can get me back. I said, you can tater me back, what the fuck ever. If it makes you happy, go ahead and do it. So he started punching me. And he would chop me with his fist. He hit me in the head, hit me in the face. And I was like, what the fuck? And I said, don't forget who's doing the job. <laughs> he was like, it ain't over. 
And this is in the ring? Yeah, we was okay. having this conversation in the ring. And I was like, don't forget you said it. So it's time to go home. Picked him up, slammed him, went up, got a chair, dove off, hit him. One, two, three. He said, it ain't over. I said, okay. He was in the ring. I rolled out of the ring. I went to the dressing room. And that's what everybody found out, that that nightstick I had wasn't rubber. They all thought it was rubber. He walked in the door. I hit him in the head. He hit the ground. We started fighting. He bleeding everywhere. Fucking head busted wide open. So after they pulled us apart, Taz said, Jack, that wasn't fair. You had a stick. I said, Taz, suck my dick. I was like, fuck you, Peter. I'm like, kiss my motherfucking ass. You know what I mean? Did you call him Peter? Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> They got in between me and Taz. I said, let him go. I said, Taz don't want none of this. I said, let him go. So he was like, what the fuck, Jake? What the fuck? So they took me out the back door. Paul D comes in the back. He says, meet me in my room at the Holiday Inn at 2 o'clock. I'm just picking a time. I called Paul D. He had got back to the hotel. I went up there to the room. He said, Jack, <laughs> I got to send you home for a couple of weeks. I said, I don't give a fuck. I said, you still paying me, right? He was like, I'm going to keep paying you. Oh, well. But you got to go home for a couple of weeks. And we was into a, doing an anger with Public Enemy. Mm -hmm. So that next night, we were supposed to get the straps. Oh. But because I hit that motherfucker in the head with that stick, that nice stick, <laughs> we was off the goddamn, they, they, they took us out. Sent us home. That's when Scorp came to my house with them goddamn kids. <laughs> That was the same, now that I think about it, that was the same time that Scorp came to my house that next week with them fucking kids. Sure it was. But Dancing with Dudley got his ass tore up that night. I tore his ass up. Was Dancers with Dudley known as a, a shooter, a dangerous guy or anything? Mm -mm. No? So what, what do you think the problem stemmed from? He I, just didn't want to do a job? He didn't or? want to do a job to me. No. It didn't work out well for him. He did the job in more ways than one. Oh, well. Now, when, let me ask you this. When issues like this would arise, would it bother your partner at all? <laughs> I probably shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Mustafa went and told Pauli. He said, Pauli, I can still work. I can work without Jack. Full time? Or just on that suspension? Full time. Oh. And that's when I told Mustafa. I said, Mustafa, I love you like a brother. I said, but understand something. I'm the gangster. I, I said, I am the gangster. I said, when they pay to come and see us, they pay to come and see me. Not us, but me. No one's reaching out to Mustafa Saeed for appearances like this or no. autograph signings and things like that. Nothing against the man. I don't know him, but... I love him to death, but it is what it is. It's the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's the truth. And when he did that, 
Pauline was like, uh, I don't want nothing to do with this. <laughs> he was like, I don't want shit to do with this. But I told him, I said, dude, they didn't come to see us. They came to see me. Paul Heyman had to have been smart enough to know where the value was in that tag team. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Yeah. So he uh, internally probably left when Saeed came to him with the offer. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like. Now, how did you find out? Paulie told me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like keeping peace between everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> he told me. And what good did he think was going to come out of that in his locker room out of curiosity? I have no idea. Uh, but that motherfucker just straight up snitch. He was like, Jack, y'all work it out. I said, it ain't shit to work out. I said, he'll come back to work when well, I come back to work. To be play devil's advocate. Do you think maybe he was worried that incidents he wasn't involved with might cost him his job? He knew any time I got suspended, he was going to. And yeah, he might have thought that. But it's like I said. And see, this is something that, that, that happened that was funny. I had some cases pending in Georgia. I had to go down there and turn myself in. Oh, did you? Paul Lee told me, he said, Jack, I have you out before the weekend's over, before the weekend comes. He said, you'll be on the next show. I said, Paul Lee, the only bondsman that's going to touch me is going out of town in three days. I said, you got to do the shit now. He said, consider it done. That motherfucker let that bail bondsman go out of town. And instead of me spending three days in jail, I spent eight weeks. What year was this now? Was this 95? 95. Yeah. That's why you were going for so long. Yeah. So I came back to the arena and Joy Styles introduced us. I came to the ring, I grabbed the mic, and I cut this promo. <laughs> but what I said was something that turned the fans, put them on my side. What'd you say? I said, I sit in jail over two months, almost three months. I said, I actually missed you motherfuckers. I said, they had, to, they had me watching WCW. I said, <laughs> I said, and that's when I would go to the bathroom and jack off. I said, I couldn't stand that shit. I said, but this is it was watching. I said, but I actually missed you crazy motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They start chanting New Jack. Good. I went back to the locker room. Paulie said, come here. I said, what? He said, do you realize what you just did? I said, I'll cut a promo. He said, no. You just turned your step into the biggest baby face in this locker room. He said, it ain't no going back. He said, if you fuck somebody's mother in the middle of the ring. No, no, he said grandmother. He said, if you fuck somebody's grandmother in the middle of the ring, he said, they would cheer you on. <laughs> he said, it ain't nothing you can do to go back and take that back. He said, nothing. And from that point on, I was a face. They would chant me and Mustafa, merchandise sales without the goddamn window. Paul, he was paying me like it wasn't no fucking joke. Yes. Let me ask you this. Were you and Mustafa making the same money? Nope. Good. <laughs> I would think that'd be a little absurd, to be honest with you. I found out one night 
Mustafa had to stay late because he had to talk to Paul Lee about something. We was done with promos. So I told Paul Lee, I said, give Mustafa my money when he's done talking to you. He said, okay. Now, mind you, our promos will go on to like 4 and 5 o'clock Late in the night. morning. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of people would take their bag with them, do promos, and go straight to their the airport. airport. Yeah. I did it a few times. That motherfucker didn't give Mustafa my money. I kept calling him, and he finally answered the phone. He said, Jack, where are you? I said, I'm in my room. He said, I just got back to my room. He said, come to my room and get your money. I said, why wouldn't you give it to Mustafa? He said, Aww. Jack, you and Mustafa don't make the same amount of money. He said, you make twice as more than Mustafa. Three times. He said, and I didn't want him to see that. Sure. So yeah. I just decided i hang on to it. He said, if I would have had to pay you next week when you came back, I would have just had to hold your money. Or if I had the Western Union, your money, whatever the fuck, put it in your bank account, whatever the fuck. He said, but I couldn't give it to myself. And that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine the turmoil that would have caused if he found out at that point? Yeah. It would have been a lot of bullshit. And see, it's fucked up. Like I said, it ain't me talking bad about it. I'm telling the truth. So it's a big difference. You know what I'm saying? But when me and Mustafa broke up. Nobody cared about him. No. And the way we broke up was so fucked up. Mustafa missed the weekend. We were doing an angle with the Dudleys. We had just started working the Dudleys. Terry Funk was on a show in Cali. Mustafa was on a show in Cali, the same show. Mm -hmm. Terry Funk came up to me. He said, New Jack, I met your partners, your new partners. I said, what new partners? I said, what are you talking about? He said, oh, you didn't know? He said, I read the Mustafa last week in California. And he came out to the ring with these two guys, and they called themselves the New Gangsters. And what did you think of that? I said, you bullshit me, right? He said, no. He said, oh, you didn't know. I went to Paul E. He had just put the straps on us. I told him, I handed him my belt. I said, take my belt. I said, here. He said, that's not mine, that's yours. I said, no, I'm not wearing this belt. I said, here. He said, what are you doing? He said, we just put them on you. I said, well, find a way to take them off. I said, because I'm not tagging with Mustafa no more. You didn't trust I, them. I said, so whichever one of us you don't book next week for the show, I understand. He said, well, I'm going to tell you now, Mustafa fired. <laughs> he knew you meant business. He said, you going to tell him? I said, I'll tell him. And I went and told him. I said, your services are no longer needed. And how did he react to that? You being fired by his tag team partner. He looked at me like, what? Dude, I was hot. I was fucking hot. You know what I mean? And... We didn't speak again for like five years. They brought him back to do an angle with me and the Dudleys. And I agreed to do it, but when I saw him, I changed my mind. You didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. Paul D said, you gave me your word. And he was like, what are you going to do? 
I said, all right, I said, I'm a man of my word. I said, I'm going to do it. I said, but when this shit's done, I said, ain't no getting back together with me and Mustafa. He wanted to put you guys back together again or have you guys feud? He wanted he want to feud. Uh -huh. But it was just to look at him. You were that angry? Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah. I was hot, bro. I was so hot. So he, just so I understand right, and I'm describing to the fans right, he no-showed an ECW show that you guys were booked on, worked an independent with Terry Funk out in California and introduced the new gangsters? Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. Did he, did he ever explain why when you guys kind of spoke again? He was like, Jack, I was going to tell you I was going to bring you aboard. He was going to bring you aboard. I said, you were going to bring like me aboard? Like he was carrying the team. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I was like, bro, you got me fucked up. Who owns the name? Me. He has no ownership to it? I got the trademark to that name. I got the rights to that name. You know what I mean? He's I own it. He has no rights to it whatsoever. No. Good. <coughs> he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> All my shit is trademark. Good. Everything. You my books, my action figures, my cards, my pictures, everything. I got the rights to everything. Good. That's the way it should be. I mean, like you said, I mean, you could have fucking taken one of the, not, not for nothing, one of our fine folks in the control room and teamed up with them. Yeah. And the team would have been just as over. As long as you were doing your promos, your gimmicks. I can't think, and I, I don't know the man. I'm not trying to knock him. But when I think back to ECW history, I can't think of anything of interest or significance that he ever did. We was in Boston. Is it Worcester? Worcester. 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 We was there. <laughs> Paul, Lee said, I want you to tag with somebody. I said, who? He says, I don't know. <laughs> Hell of an answer. He said, but I want you to tag with somebody. I said, Paulie, are you going to pick? Or you want me to pick? He said, it's your tag team. Pick somebody. I saw Spike Dudley sweeping the ring. <laughs> He was, they, they just put the ring up and he was sweeping the mat. I said, that'd be an odd ass tag team. I said, New Jack and Spike. Feuding with the Dudleys. Yeah. I said, Paulie, I want Spike. He said, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> I said, no. I said, we'll be the underdogs. I want Spike. He was like, it'll never work. I said, let me hit the ring on the Dudleys. Let them get up on me. And then let them hit Spike's music. Watch what happened. He did it. Paulie came with me. He handed me $200. Did he really? You got a little bonus? Yeah. He was like, you was right. Again. Again. And we took that act on the road, and it was over like a motherfucker. Well, wrestling fans, unbelievable. We continue these great stories. We jumped a little bit ahead, but don't worry. We're going to go back to early 1996 after this brief timeout on Wrestling Inside is Extreme. While you enjoy the fine uh, commercials we have on this show, if you have a second screen, head on over to the only newjack.com where you can get this autobiography and all your new jack needs stand by tickets are on sale now for our 20th anniversary back to the 80s and 90s wrestlefest birthday bash saturday november the 13th at memorial hall in melrose massachusetts wrestling fans i'm dan marotti and this is the man of the hour leo rush it was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media but leo brother they got to check out some of this merch they got to 
Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. The Undisputed Era kicked ass and took no prisoners in WWE NXT. Now you can own this limited edition collector's autograph dot print personally signed by Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. Also signed by the original artist, Rob Schamberg, a one of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible for your collection now. Wrestling fans, especially here in the Boston area, we want to thank our great friends at Red Rose for their support for all of our charitable endeavors and programming efforts. Red Rose is two years young and extremely thankful for all the support they've had from our neighbors here in Melrose and beyond for an amazing first two years. Red Rose thanks Melrose and all of the first responders who have fought the good fight and have never given up hope during these unprecedented times. We did it together. Follow Red Rose on Facebook for their anniversary special, facebook.com backslash Red Rose Melrose. You'll be glad you did. Open until 2 a.m. Red Rose will give you fresh, piping hot, mouth-watering food that'll put an ear-to-ear -ear smile on even the toughest critic's face. Check out their full menu online at redrosema.com or give them a call 781-620-1889. Hi, right, wrestling fans. Welcome back to Wrestling Inside is Extreme. We hope you're having as much fun as we are. Maybe not as much fun as that pig down in Gainesville. <laughs> oh, butt liquor. Her tongue had a lot of fun with Yes, Blue it Jack. did. It was extreme, baby. She it, caught me. She what? She caught me like this. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking whore. I do. A friend that just walked in. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is the adult themed version of Wrestling Insiders, uh, but we're having fun anyway. Again, put the women and children to bed. This is not the one we're going to send off to WWE for our toy drive every year. Uh, <laughs> anyway, back to 1996. They opened up with, what the hell was it called? House Party 96. Your return, and it was the farewell of uh, grunge and uh, rock or rock. The public enemy was jumping ship to WCW. Memories of that interesting night, one that I kind of take issue with. Pauline told him not to go. Mm -hmm. Because they had called me Mustafa. Really? And I had heat with Kevin Nash. Why? I don't remember. I just remember him causing me to not get a spot earlier. They wanted to bring me in. Wait a minute. I might be wrong on the time. You remember when Master P came in? Oh, yeah. That was 99, though. Okay. Yeah. That, around that time? Around that time. They said they wanted somebody to be with them that wrestled. Because didn't none of them know shit about wrestling. Right, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, my name came up. And Kevin Nash was on the committee at the time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he was booking. And he said, New Jack's a problem. He said, if you bring him in, you're going to bring in a bunch of lawsuits. Really? And he said, wow. I don't agree on bringing him in. J.J. Dillon told me this. And they scratched it. Did anyone from WCW reach out to you to see if you were available or interested? Kevin Nash had some pull at the time. Sure. So once it got to him, that was it. But before that, did anyone see if you were even interested in the sport or no? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. You don't remember. I, I can't sit here and say I do know because I don't. I, I don't remember. Um, would you have been available? Did you have a contract with ECW at that point or no? Or I never had a contract. Never. Mm. So they were merchandising you with action figures and a video game, and you didn't even have a contract with them. I got a, I got, I, I got a guarantee. 
You could have left at any time. Yeah. Really? That's kind of dangerous, especially back then. I know, but the deal was with Paul e, he was like, he didn't trust me because he was like, you would go off at, at any given fucking time and I just don't trust you signed the contract. I said, well, I he didn't want you to be under contract to him, basically? No, really? He didn't. That's crazy. And I didn't want to be under contract with him. Why? Because I was like, if this motherfucker can take control of me and have me sitting at home, not making no goddamn money, just because he don't, because he feel like it, then he'll do it. And I didn't want, I refused to sign a contract. Well, what if you had a contract that was guaranteed for X amount of dollars, though? That wouldn't have... I didn't trust it. Really? Mm. Hmm. Just in that company or in general? With, with Paul e. Yeah, just with Paul e. With WCW, I'm sure you would have had to have signed one if you wound up going. When they talked to Johnny Grunge and Teddy, I don't forget who it was I talked to. But they was like, they was taking a few people from ECW. And my name came up. And Paulie came to me. And see, like I said, I wasn't really all that bright on promoters stabbing each other in the goddamn back. You know what I mean? So I was just like, okay, dude, what the fuck ever. He was like, Jack, if you go down there, they're going to embarrass you. You saw what they did to Public Enemy. And then when they sent them to WWF, you saw what they did. They beat them. They the got Beatings. They, <laughs> they beat this. And I was like to myself, I was like, it ain't no motherfucking way I would let them motherfuckers beat me like that. I said, ain't I be cutting? I think there's a difference between, not to, nothing against the two of them, because I like them both a lot, but I think there's a difference between you and Grunge and Rock or yeah. Rock. I mean, John Layfield and Ron Simmons beat the fuck out of them. Yeah. And Bob Hawley beat the fuck out of them when he was doing that tag team gimmick with his uh, crash, his little cousin. Mm -hmm. I mean, the be uh, violent beatings that anyone that has ever watched it, it could tell there's something very different about this <laughs> compared to the, to the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it about them that, that, that got the, did you ever, I don't know if you'd know, but what was it about them that it was just the I know, I know some in WWF had told me that they had a, attitude maybe issues or they was one of the top tag teams in ECW right well at the time everybody had heat with anybody that was on top that came from ECW so they used them as examples and they beat the fuck out of them Beat the fuck out of them. You know, what's funny. It didn't come up as we were talking 1995, but I thought it was rather degrading that WWF used them. I don't know if you even remember this, but they did Survivor Series 1995 in Washington, D.C., and they brought Public Enemy in for a dark match. I'm not sure if they were the champions at that point, but they put over the smoke and guns in about two and a half minutes as if they were nothing. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just kind of cringed at that when I yeah. had found out about it. They Even before they came in under contract, they treated them like they were nothing. Right. Yeah. Because they was over in ECW. Yeah. And everybody hated. If you think back, everybody from ECW, except for Bubba and Devon and Rob Van Dam, got destroyed. Yeah. Sabu, eh, but he still got his ass whooped. His push wasn't for long. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very short lived. But and I was just like, I can't do it. I said, I can't do it. I what said, it? when it comes to promos, I eat these motherfuckers' ass alive. I said, and as far as my presence in the ring, I know I can do better than that. I know I could. Oh, then Public Enemy? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but let me ask you this. The House Party 96, it was Public Enemy's farewell before they went to WCW. What I never understood was, why did you guys do the job and put them over on there last night? It, I think it should have been the other way around. They should have been putting someone else over to make them. Even if it wasn't you guys. Even if it was a, a new up-and-coming team or something. You know what I mean? Why put them over in, in a, 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 a state of glory on their last night when they were leaving the company? Me and Mustafa put them over? Yeah. 
Me and Paulie had heat. You were just coming back from a suspension. And he was still mad at me. <laughs> so I told Mustafa, this was right after Public Enemy because we started working with Bubba and Devon not too long after that. I told Mustafa, I said, I'm going to start doing something that they ain't going to remember who went over. I said, trust me. He said, Jack, tell me. I said, uh-uh. I said, well, you might go tell it. I said, but I'm going to start doing something, and they ain't going to remember who the fuck went over. Trust me. I started diving. And after the match, whether we was up or down, they was chanting New Jack. Didn't make a difference. Paul, he looked at me. He said, you just don't give up, do you? <laughs> he must have admired your persistence, if nothing else, right? He was like, he was like, you, 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 you just don't give up. I said, Paulie, when I was a kid, my mom used to come home from work, and I would climb on top of the house, and then she drove up in the driveway. I would jump off the house. In front of her car like this. Ah! Like Spider-Man almost. Yeah. yeah. And I said, that shit will make her beat the fuck out of me. And I said, it got over. I said, and since we've been doing this wrestling shit, you done made me go into my bag. I got to bring out some shit that people are going to remember. And that's when I started fucking diving. I knew it was over when he came me one night. And he said, Jack, can you do me a favor? I said, what? He said, can you dive? I said, can you pay me? You weren't doing it every night? Mm -mm. Oh, OK. Just about, but not every night. I said, can you pay me? He was like, sure. <laughs> And my paycheck went out the window. Without getting too personal, how much extra was the dive worth to you? A lot. You don't want to say? No, okay. it was a lot. It was a lot, though? It was a lot. Well, when you, if you attended one of the events, what would be one of the top things you'd go home thinking about? You know? Yeah. That's why. Did you ever really need Mustafa? No. <laughs> I mean, if we keep going back to that point, but I don't want to beat a dead horse, but back to House Party 96, do you, do you think it was wrong to have them go over on anybody their last night in? No. I think they should have jobbed. Make somebody. But they were they, over. When they came back, nobody cared. Paulie was like, I want you all to work public enemy. He said, in five minutes, they putting y'all over. He said, it ain't shit else I can do with them. They were buried. Yeah. Everywhere they went. He said, they done went down there and got their ass beat to death. He said, it ain't shit else I can do with them. And that was there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they made good money when they left. Like I said, I know, thank you, buddy. I knew a lot. Like I said, we did a lot with grunge when I worked for Tony Rumble when I was younger. But in ECW, it was a joke. Then they went to WWF, and it was a joke. I think they went back and forth four times. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm sure they made very healthy money. But what did it do for the longevity of their career? By 99, 2000. They were done. Where were they going to go? They were done. Nothing. They were done. All right, wrestling fans, unfortunately, I think he summed it up best because we just got the cue from the back. Unfortunately, we are done. Another episode of Wrestling Inside is Extreme has come and gone. It was great to have you with us again. Where can they get this, this great book? Where, where is it? TheOnlyNewJack.com. Buy my shit. Have you ever read the book Too Much Too Soon, the autobiography of WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas? No. <laughs>
Would you like to? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a feeling before this series is all said and done, Tony might shed a tear or two. <laughs> Between what you said about his artwork and... Uh, uh, poor Tony, poor Tony. But we had a lot of fun, folks. We would love to know what you thought about the show tonight. If you're watching the premiere to my right, we have the premiere chat box Go and Leave us a message. If you're watching after the fact, Leave a message in the comment section below if you're watching the premiere. The super chat button is always open. Don't forget to tip the bartender. Him and I wouldn't mind an ice adult beverage after the show. Yeah, after the, after show. the show. After the show only, exclusively. Also, the coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, but our eBay store is open 24-7. We have great wrestling collectibles of every era available for you. You help us keep the lights on. You help us keep the wrestling legends working. And if you really want to step up and beyond being a fan, beyond being a friend of the show, if you want to be part of the Boston wrestling family, head on over to patreon.com. You get early ad-free access to all of these wrestling insider shows. You get access to our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library that's been seen by millions online, millions on the Howard Stern show, thanks to Sheiky Baby. You get some Patreon exclusives, and you help keep wrestling legends working. As Jack and I were discussing during one of the breaks, this studio is a great platform to help guys that can't get in the ring and wrestle or have been killed due to coronavirus due to the lack of live events earn an income and live. So patreon.com backslash bostonwrestling.com. It's less than a cup of coffee. For my partner in crime here on Wrestling Insiders Extreme New Jack, I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you next time. Good night. Peace. Tickets are on sale now for our 20th anniversary Back to the 80s and 90s WrestleFest Birthday Bash Saturday, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Thank you for joining us. Please give the video a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more great content. Don't forget, you can help keep wrestling legends working. Check out our eBay store and join the Boston Wrestling family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling so we can produce more in-depth shoot interviews.